Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Samantha Russell, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at 20 Over 10. And today, myself and three members of my marketing team, Nicole Scalamera, Monica Pote, and Alex Brooks, we will be presenting on six steps to writing great content for your website. Today's presentation is focusing on website content, so that's going to be static content that really doesn't change too much over time. You may change things here or there, um, but it's not like a blog or something that you're regularly producing every week, you know, putting out new articles. So keep that in mind as we're going through the presentation, as obviously um, the way that you go about writing blog content would be very different from website content. Um, in case you are unfamiliar with 20 over 10, we are a company that is devoted to helping financial advisors improve their digital marketing through primarily websites. We also can help with social media, blogging, and other digital marketing services. So if you haven't already, please check us out on 20over10.com. Um, just a couple housekeeping items. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to uh, type out your questions in the uh, control panel throughout the presentation. However, we will answer, answer them all at the end. As well, we will be emailing out the presentation. It does include a ton of great um, tips and links to articles and things like that that you can use to go and write your website content after this presentation. So uh, we will be emailing these slides at the end. And that being said, I should just make one other note that today's presentation is not just for people who are writing their content for the first time, although we do have a lot of information that if you were starting from scratch, what you could do. But we also have included a lot of information that if you already have a website, you should really go back and go through these steps again and ensure that the way that you went about the process the first time was done in the best way possible. And you can use these steps to ensure that the content that you currently have on your website meets all of your needs. At the very end of the presentation, I will be talking specifically about SEO. Um, it's a question we get a lot, so we'll save that for last. Um, just talking about how the content you write on your website will translate um, into helping you get some better search engine results. So make sure you stay on to the end for the search engine optimization information. So with that, I am going to hand um, the, the mic over, if you will, to Nicole to get started. Oh, actually, I guess I should say what our agenda is first. <laughs> Sorry, Nicole. Um, so the quick rundown of our agenda, we're going to go through the actual six steps that we use here at 20 over 10 when we are writing content for advisors. So we do offer a package where advisors can um, work with us to create the content with them for their website rather than just providing it to us. So these are our six steps. And then at the very end, we will wrap up and talk about SEO. So um, yes, now I'm ready to hand it over to Nicole. Hi, Samantha. Thanks so much. And hello, everybody. Once again, my name is Nicole. I'm so excited to have you all here for today. Uh, before delving into the six steps of website content, we want to start out by really sharing some great statistics with you and pretty much why we're here in the first place. So as you know, for your business, it really truly is important to have a strong online presence. As the Internet's growing, um, it's increasingly important for your business to have that online presence. And with a good website, of course, comes good content. So what we're trying to say here pretty much is that 55% of users spend fewer than 15 seconds actively on a web page. This means that as soon as a user comes right on your homepage, you have just about 15 seconds to truly leave that first impression. So what is this saying? Pretty much get your point across accurately and capture your interest immediately. And as soon as you capture that interest, that's when users are going to start clicking on other parts of your web page. So that could be your About Me page, your Team page, your Processes page, Services. Getting your point across immediately will further grasp the interest of your, of your viewers to kind of move along your web page. So pretty much what's the point of all this is that we're saying you just have a short amount of time to truly leave an impression on your viewers. Uh, on the next slide, we're going to see an example of one of our previous clients that we worked with in the past. This is BSI um, Insurance. This was his web page before we began working with him. It's no longer live, but this is just an example of bad content structure. Here we have just a lot of text 
random images kind of laid out around the page and just a lot of links that really it's hard to see where direction is leading. It's kind of as if um, it's competing for your attention. This is something that we really stress with our clients is that yes design is a huge part of website content but it's just more so that content is when it comes down to it and it just plays a tremendous role in your website and your web page and whether or not someone is going to click on to the next important pages of your site. So on the next slide after building their website, this is kind of what we came up with. We have on the top, you know, the main header page, we have the about us, the personal insurance, commercial insurance, and people are able to click through it in a very cohesive, coherent way. Here we have the content. Um, it's laid out, it's straight to the point, there's bullets, it's easily scannable, it really attracts the viewer and the reader. Now you have you, it really, it, it speaks to the viewer right away. And then on the right, we also have this separate news tab. So you know where to go from looking at this web page. It's not like there's so many things pointing at you that you have no idea where to turn next. And ultimately, this is obeying our website rules of user friendliness. So we see the sense of direction while also portraying content in a, in a really positive light. So on our next slide, we have some takeaway points. It's really important to obey by the user experience. As I mentioned previously, on the home page, you have a couple of seconds to really grasp that user's interest. And then from there, they'll click onto the other pages. So really, you just have a couple of minutes to leave your mark on the viewer. And some reasons why people will leave your site automatically is if it's too lengthy, they're not getting what they expect, it's slow or not mobile friendly, and as mentioned before, it's not easily navigable. There's just too many points and there's too many uh, directions for you to lead competing for attention. So these are just some takeaway points. Now let's go on to the first step when it comes to building effective content for your website. Let's go back to elementary school when we were writing our book reports. Really before writing anything, you want to establish a purpose. So before writing a blog or an article post or even a memo or even an email, you want to answer these two questions. Who is going to be reading my content and what next steps do I want them to take after reading the content? So goals are really important to establish right away in the beginning because it leads you to the direction of where your website's taking you. So as long as you're in the process of building your content, you can always go back to your goals to reference them, which will serve as the foundation for your website. Next, I'm going to show some examples of goals that our previous clients have had in the past. So these are some good examples. Um, they're okay examples for the most part. You can still build a website from these examples, from these goals. Um, most financial advisors have these goals. You know, they want to have a good first impression. They want to have a professional summary and easy access to contact information. But the problem with these goals is that they're very generic. They're simplified. You want to really establish goals that differentiate you as your business. So we could still build a site off these goals, but you want to, but in order for you to have some tangible results, you really want to make your goals more detailed and specific and really tailored for your firm. So here's an example of some great goals that one of our other clients has established. This is much better because it's specific rather than generic. They're more focused and you can see they're even geographically focused where he's really trying to reach out to the Lafayette, Louisiana, Louisiana area. And kind of as going back, a generic goal could be, I want to attract new clients. Yes, every financial advisor wants to attract those new clients, and that's a great goal, but we need to expand upon that. So is there a certain age group or a certain niche market that you're trying to reach? A great example of a specific goal could be, I want to attract new clients in the New York City area who are pre-retirees looking for strategies to feel secure about retirement. Now we're focusing on a geographic area, a certain niche market, and a certain age group. So really, really think about your goals before you begin moving on with your process for building your content. Some takeaway points for establishing your goals. Now goals are a great way to measure whether you've been successful or not. You build your site and you answer the following questions. Now give your, uh, once your site goes live, give it a couple of months, 
start reaching out to your colleagues, your peers, and then start ask, ask yourself these questions. Did I meet each of my goals and have these website goals proven to be successful in my business goals? So did you reach out to that specific clientele that you're trying to reach out to? And then think back, do I need to make any adjustments? So see your success, see what you didn't reach, and make a new set of goals and adjustments to reach your ultimate objective. Now, this is a huge step that we always urge our clients to do when collecting their specific um, content for their website. Now, any necessary or relevant information that you have, this can include presentation, bios, even grab them from LinkedIn if you have to, white papers, Word documents, any information or text that can accurately portray your business or your service. So in any case, you can even reference certain advisors' websites that you felt really resonate with your business. Anything that you feel is important to really portray who you are, your services, and what you do as a firm. Next, once you have all this information, all these words, put it all into one document. It doesn't have to be in any specific order at this stage but rather just have all your thoughts laid out for you and everything's in front of you. That's when we can start going on and moving along with the process. So onto our next slide, we have here some examples of our clients who've had some documents in the past and we see on the left um, some steps regarding CFP, which can be used for a potential processes page on the website. And on the right, one of our clients had a document that kind of laid out his services and benefits this can go on a potential services page. So this is all great. Putting it all into one document really gets everything organized and kind of gets you on the right step towards building your content. So once you have that going, you can move on to the next, um, on to the next step, which is pretty much here we have some examples of our own clients and their, their main links and pages up front their navigation tabs. So the front we have the main tabs. And then within each tab, you can have sub tabs. So under services, you may want to separate that out into financial planning, investment management, tax management, whatever you really want to portray to your potential clients and your viewers about your specific firm and business. So you have all this information and content all in one document. Now that's when you begin to start thinking, what pages do I really want and where do I want to put everything? So you could have a services page, an about me page, a processes page. This is when you want to consider where you think everything should go. So now we have a grip on the organization stage. We can go further into building your pages. Now Alex is going to talk about how to create a hierarchy between your pages and subpages and how to create the ideal outline for your website content. Thanks, Nicole. So the next step when thinking about your website content is creating an outline and outlining the different pages and subpages you plan to have on your website. An outline, or also known as a sitemap, it makes it easy and very organized when you're trying to come up with the different pages and content that you want to feature on your website. A sitemap allows for you to see a visual of exactly what will be included on your website and a set a sitemap also breaks down the pages and the subpages as well. Here you can see an example of a sitemap we have created here at 20 over 10. So we have the seven main pages and then page two, six, and seven also have subpages as well. So if you're more of a visual, uh, more of a visual person, you can easily create a sitemap on Microsoft Word by going to insert, smart art, and then hierarchy. And you're able to build a visual sitemap that looks something like this. And you still have your seven main pages, so home, about, see only, our services, FAQs, resource center, and contact us. And then there are sub pages off of those as well. According to research, having seven pages is the magic number including your homepage. Current and prospective clients aren't going to feel super overwhelmed when they're trying to navigate your website and they'll be able to get a good look at the site and the information that they're looking for. Having seven main pages is what we recommend, but you can have as many sub pages as you feel necessary 
to host all of the information you have categorized under all of your uh, seven main pages. It's uh, much less important to have a set number of subpages than it is to have your seven main pages. And when it comes to organizing your content uh, into the different sections, it doesn't matter if you want to write everything down and categorize them under the sections they'll go under first, or if you want to figure out your sections and then what information will go under them. As long as you're able to organize your content in a way that makes sense to you, in a way that will make sense to the clients looking at your website, that's really all that matters. Different people have different styles, and people know what they want to say what, or what they need to help get organized. And other people need an outline to try and get organized. So whatever works best for you is perfect. Here we have an example of a home page on a sitemap. And on the next slide, we are going to show you how um, making a sitemap on a Word document will actually translate onto your actual website. So they had those questions on the slide before, and here they are laid out on their actual website. On the next slide, we have, um, again, an just another example of some FAQs taken right from the Word document on the top left uh, and how that translates onto your actual website. So that you can see that's the second question, what is a financial advisor, and then the answer, and then um, the third one, what is different about Garrett Advisors, that you know it's listed down in there. Another element of your website that should be peppered throughout is a strong call to action. Calls to action are phrases on your website such as let's get started, schedule a meeting, or let's get acquainted. Those are all examples of good calls to action. When you're creating your call to action for your website, make sure it's a consistent phrase that doesn't change throughout your website. And you should be thinking about the end goal you're trying to reach with prospective clients when you're coming up with your call to action. Calls to action are usually a button on your website that hyperlinks to either a contact form, your contact page, or an outside online meeting schedule, scheduler system, depending on what you personally decide to have. Here's, an, here's a good example of a call to action. You can see this website features their tagline, followed by the call to action right below it. You can also see at the top, they have the seven main pages that we were talking about before. And also, here's what that same website looks like on a mobile phone with the call to action still right below her tagline. And those seven pages are listed when you scroll over that navigation button. Here's an example of a call that separates two different main pages on a, scroll, on a single scrolling website. It's, it's effective to place your call to action between the different pages so when prospective clients are scrolling through, they see your call to action on the website multiple times. And this is also what the call to action for the previous website looks like in between pages on a mobile phone as well. Once you get your content organized into the different pages and subpages, and after you enter in your call to action, we want to get even into further detail on how to break up your content into multiple sections and subheaders. Writing that, which leads me in to step number four of the process, which is easy, having easy to scan headers. Writing eye-catching titles and subtitles is ultimately what will bring a greater audience to your website and will make them want to read more of your content. What many people don't realize is that people tend to scan over what they're reading before they actually commit to reading the entire content. So coming up with headers and titles and subtitles that are exciting and attention catching is just as important as the content that's written below it. Here are some of the tips to keep in mind while writing headlines for your website. Make sure they're clear and make sure they're ultimately clear and not too clever, that they're short and to the point and that's better than being long and lengthy. 
Don't be afraid to use a question as your headliner and make sure to include keywords that people might search for in your headers for SEO purposes. Here we have a great example of a website that has easy to scan headers. It's easy to identify what each section is about and the headers are attention grabbing and they make you want to read more about each specific header. Here we have a bad example of easy to scan headers in a website that's ultimately hard to navigate. Um, on the left hand side you can see all the different links and it's hard to even identify what information you're looking for, where it's located. And make sure you're not afraid to cater to your niche when uh, writing your headers by using phrases that they can identify with. It's ultimately going to give them a greater sense of trust for you and your firm. And here we have an example of a niche specific header. This firm and website specifically targets current and retired pro athletes. So for them, using terms like field and goals is appropriate for who they're trying to target. Here are some examples of good subheaders that people are able to identify with and they'll still want to read more on. Um, it's very clear, concise, and to the point, and you get a real sense of what uh, they're trying to put right on their website. Overall, having good headers and subheaders that people can identify with will ultimately lead people into reading more into your firm and on your website, and they'll leave with a greater understanding of your services and exactly what types of things you're able to offer them. And now Monica is going to get into rounding everything out and more on website content. Hi guys, so step five is um, to fill in the content. And you don't want to use jargon, you want to speak more of your customer's language. So definitely remember your audience. And especially as a financial advisor, you're attracting readers who have little to no financial knowledge or background. And they're seeking your advice to just break it down. They might not have the time to read through all that complex information because financial content can be overwhelming at times. So just remember, you don't have to explicitly outline all of your different services. The content on your website should in no way showcase um, your financial literacy. That's supposed to be what your credentials in your biography imply. So if you do choose to elaborate on your services, um, you just remember to lightly provide everything in little content and in um, layman's term. So you want to make it easy for visitors to get to know you. So niche marketing is where you have a specific product or and you market it to a specific group. And the product features help satisfy that specific market. And you can showcase that in your content by establishing your understanding of the specific market that you are targeting. And you can talk about other issues that you would have helped solve within that client group. And you can do that by speaking to them as if you're speaking with a friend. You can speak with them, not at them. As far as lecturing goes, you want to speak with them as you're speaking with a friend and just going off of that in the niche market. So when it comes to writing content, the whole, fr the whole overall strategy of it is less is more. And you're just going to want to remain professional yet friendly. And that's how you should write your tone so that people can comprehend it a little bit better. Um, the amount of content doesn't have a specific character limit. It's more about portraying your points very clearly and effectively without repetition and while you're considering your target audience. So if you have all those things in line, that's, you're in great shape. And your blog is where you're really supposed to have your longer content and go into deeper topics that are more specific to your audience. Your website is more of a summary point for your services. And this is um, more of an example of taglines. So step six is to develop your taglines for the market that you're in. So what is a tagline? A tagline is a catchphrase or slogan that is often used to market or define the business philosophy in a different way. So taglines should help set the tone for your business 
by stating the business philosophy. So to generate the, a remarkable tagline that um, accurately reflects your business, you should consider incorporating your company's offerings or history into that content. And by doing so, you're creating a tagline that's harder for other competitors to duplicate. And I have an example on the slide to simplify your wealth. And that's a great example of setting the tone for the website. Um, and then taglines should also be memorable. They don't have to be overly creative or extraneously long just to simply avoid repetition from any competitors. Your main focus in mind when writing the tagline should be to clearly communicate the focus of your business and allow readers to see the vision of the company. So the best taglines are simple yet memorable. Keeping the tagline short and sleep Sleep Sweet will also increase memorability and readability. This is an example of a tagline that we wrote for one of our clients. Um, it is for a firm called Finance for Teachers, and they focus specifically on helping educators for, with financial solutions. And the great thing that they did here was that they overlaid their tagline onto a picture. And this actually helps set the tone for their website. So it says, welcome home. You are looking to find a, an advisor who understands your financial needs as an educator. Congratulations, you found us. So it basically defines a problem and sets a solution for it. And this is also a great way um, for engaging niche marketing because their niche is educators. Um, so putting it all together, how is a tagline different from a header? Alex had spoke a little bit about headers, um, but basically it just boils down to what each one supports. A header is more focused on supporting the content of your website, and while a tagline is more focused on supporting your business setting and the impression of your business. Um, right below is an example of headers. The words and goals are headers because they outline the paragraph and they break it up and more make it visually appealing. Whereas a tagline is more marketing central with a focus on who you are as a business. And headers are generated um, just based on the content below them. And they're more of an identifiable point and more specific. Taglines just outline the business as a whole on a larger scale. So where is the best place for a tagline? There are three really great places where tag or taglines are very effective. The first would be the beginning of a website to set the tone, similar to the finance for teachers example that I showed. The second is it's a great way to break out large amounts of text. And the third way is um, they're great when they have a text overlay. This is just another example of a header, or um, sorry, a tagline, and it's over a picture, and it's very inspirational because they take people's portfolios and they build them up on the mountain of success. And when we worked with this client, they really wanted to convey that. Um, and as you can see, they have their words clarity, confidence, and understanding over the picture to outline their values. And that was a very strategic move because those values are instilled into the reader's head while they skim the rest of the website. And that really um, sets the tone for their website. And just a general overview about these taglines is that they're a great marketing tool to clearly communicate your vision to your audience. And they're the best way to really set the tone for the website or even break up large amounts of content or tabs. And once you've established your tagline, um, it's time to basically just put it all together. So Sam is going to talk about how this all intertwines into a website and other SEO purposes. Okay, so thank you, Monica. So yeah, so wrapping it all up, we've talked about um, getting organized, establishing all of our content. We've gone through all six steps. Um, we have collected everything we want to include. We've developed an outline, talked about the number of pages and subpages we're going to have. So how are we going to put it all together, right? 
Um, what I'd like to show you now is an example of an actual site map that we have developed here at 20 over 10. So you can see here on the left um, the site map. So it gives us the overview of the different pages and the subpages that might be part of it. And then we go into the actual copy including um, the taglines that might go over images as well as the headers that will break up the paragraph text in between. The uh, small lowercase letters that are then the subpages that would go underneath while the large blue lettering here would be the main pages. Um, so again it keeps us um, on point with knowing what's going to be a header, what's going to be a tagline over an image. And I'd like to show you the final version of that site and how it ended up turning out. So we can see at the top here we have the tagline, find the balance between your means and dreams. Then we go into three different headers that explain um, you know, quickly the gist of what the company is trying to articulate with this website. And um, even using some content strategically to highlight to your eye you know, something that is centered here in the middle and italicized is going to be eye-catching. So you're going to notice that as well. Again, building off Monica's point of thinking about the spaces on your website that are going to be the most eye-catching. You know, we see here um, a boutique family firm and the messaging goes with the photos because that is a photo of the actual business owners. Having some quotes is great. Again, headers making it really easy to scan big blocks of text and break it up for the client or tabbing things and housing them underneath one page in an easy to navigate way. So going back to um, the last couple of points, now that you've seen how it all comes together, the last thing that you basically want to do is Take your content after you've created your document and you've outlined all the different pages and either if you're going to be building it yourself or you're going to be handing it over to somebody to build, you would provide it to your designer and have them upload it into your site. If you're doing a site refresh, you would probably be able to skip a lot of the um, other you know, steps in certain situations, but you would take the new updates that you have and start uploading it to your site. Once you see it in your site, what's great about that is that's where you're going to have the opportunity to see what sections may need to be pared down. Maybe you have some weird words or phrases hanging off the page, or maybe one section has way too much text and another section doesn't have enough. So it really will give you a nice way to see where everything is. You can also check the placement of your calls to action and ensure, as I pointed out with that Patterson example, that the images and content are sharing cohesive messaging. So now let's talk about SEO and how the content that you create is going to impact your search engine optimization. So you might have heard this before, but people will say all the time that the best SEO is great content. Once you are seeing the content back in your site, what you really want to do is go back and look at those taglines, headers especially, and the page titles, and think about the search terms that you would want to come up in if somebody did a search term. So if somebody is searching for financial advice in Cleveland, Ohio, where on your site are those terms? Can you add something to a header or to a tagline that explains that that is what you offer or that is your geographic location. You Once you see your content in your website, you may need to go back and rewrite some of those sections in order to ensure that you're meeting those needs. So for instance, writing financial planning for doctors as you know a header or a tagline or even a page title is going to be much better for SEO purposes than how we help doctors because typically somebody would probably be doing some sort of search related to the words financial planning or financial advice or investments um, and the word doctors or physician versus how we help doctors. To take it one step further, if financial planning for doctors is the header or the tagline of your section, then in the content below it, you can switch up the words that you use. So in one section you might say, we provide advice for doctors financial planning advice um, for doctors. We provide you know, strategies on how to reduce debt, choose the best ways to stay insured, and um, invest your money wisely. Using financial advice, financial planning, investments, all with different keywords will ensure that you're meeting all those different search terms that people may be looking for. 
Other SEO considerations you definitely want to pay attention to are the geographic area. Everybody needs to have on their website a specific sentence that explains exactly what they do and where they do it. You do not want this to just be in your contact page listing your address. You absolutely want there to be um, a sentence or two, specifically in a header or a tagline if possible, um, that explains where you're located. Again, we talked about the niche before. This is just a great example of a sentence that you could have somewhere on your site that shows how you would write exactly the niche that you're catering to. So offering financial guidance to Gen XY through virtual meetings, quarterly check-ins, and a financial dashboard that you can manage 24-7. That is very specific. And if somebody is searching for a planner that is specific to Gen X or Y, who maybe does have a, an online dashboard or something like that, it will give them great um, SEO boost because they have those words included. Again, at the bottom, the uh, phrase, we work with doctors to develop strategies for paying down debt, insuring smartly, and saving wisely would be another great tagline to summarize to not only the visitor what you do, but to the search engine as well. And finally, I'm going to leave you with a bunch of links to um, a whole host of articles that will walk you through writing more content, building out different strategies for search engine optimization, using things like evergreen content to come up in search results more often, and just even SEO tips in general for small businesses. Um, the website is live. Now what we'll talk about once you have your site live, what are some different steps and strategies that you can take to continue to monitor the performance as well. So that's all we have today. Um, this is our contact information. If you have specific questions about the content on your site, calls to action placement, um, you know, what you could be doing to improve, um, we're always eager to hear from our participants and learn what they found particularly helpful or areas that they thought we should, you know, just um, cover more of. So please reach out to us. Um, the marketing at 20over10.com email will get you in touch with our team and we can um, go through everything. So I'm going to just go through some of the questions that came in um, from some people. Um, will these slides be available after the presentation? Yes, Lori, we will get those um, emailed out here, um, hopefully this afternoon, if not by tomorrow morning. Um, somebody said, um, call to action question. Not sure if I should suggest schedule a meeting for our firm since we have a high assets under management minimum. However, we do have active blog presence, so what do you think of a call to action to join our blog, email list, or get a white paper? I think calls to action are very specific to your firm, and I've heard this from other people before. If you have a very specific, exclusive clientele um, and you're not taking on a ton of clients, you're very targeted in the clients that you do want to take on, you know, you don't want to be scheduling meetings all day. Um, that would be wonderful if your website was performing so well that you had tons of requests for meetings. I think it is perfectly fine to have the call to action be join our email list or download this white paper. And we have lots of examples of people who've done just that. Um, if you're thinking of doing it, the join our email newsletter um, as sort of a pop-up box, that would be the only thing I would caution you against is that people pretty quickly get frustrated if a pop-up box just pops up right away the second they land on a blog page or website. So optimally what you'd like to do is either just have it be static somewhere that they can see it no matter what blog post they read. So maybe, you know, your your call to action says, we love sharing information about um, financial planning with all of our clients and prospective clients for weekly updates or monthly updates sent directly to your inbox sign up here. And then the person can sign up. And if you really want to make it any sort of pop-up, you can do that maybe after they've been on your page for two minutes or something along those lines so that you know it's somebody who's had time to check you out rather than um, just doing it right away. Somebody else uh, um, asked, how do we keep changing text to get a higher SEO ranking? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean specifically in the uh, website, the 20 over 10 website, um, you can log into your account and, and change your text. Um, in terms of, you know, how you do it, you, you would log in, make the changes, and then if to see whether or not your ranking is increased, you would want to monitor your Google Analytics after 
you've made those changes for the next quarter or so and see which search terms have produced the most entries to your website. So if somebody is searching, you know, financial advisor in Arlington and um, you change one of your headers to reflect that, that you're a financial advisor in Arlington, Virginia, and now you can go into Google Analytics and actually see all of the people that entered your site from those search terms. So we're going to be offering a webinar July 20th um, on Google Analytics for advisors that is also open to anyone. So if you're interested in learning more about how to track the performance of your website from an SEO perspective to then help you make these types of changes, please do sign up for that. If you just go to our website, it's homepage, and then click book a demo, I can actually just show you really fast. Um, you can see that, where that is. So just go to 20over10.com, then click book a demo, and you'll see a bunch of different sessions. The Google Analytics for Advisors is right there. Um, we also were asked by somebody, let me see here. What are your thoughts on lead generation tools like Add This or Sumo Me? Um, I think that they can be really, really helpful. You know, there's so many different ones. It depends, of course, like anything else, on how you are going to use it. Um, you know, if if anybody wants to have a more specific discussion about specific tools, um, you know, please send me an email and I'm happy to write up a, a response specific to you because then I can check out your website and potentially how you may already be using it or want to use it. Um, what you definitely want to do is make sure that the leads that you're going to get are going to be relevant to you specifically, right? So like the other um, – Advisor had asked, we have a high AUM threshold, so we want to make sure we're weeding out those people. You don't want to be just sort of getting, if you don't do debt reduction strategies, for instance, you don't want to be getting a ton of people that are going to be asking you about that and you have to weed through them all, especially if you're a sole proprietor and your job is to not only service your current clients, but to do everything else, to manage your marketing, to work on lead generation and all those other things. So you really want the leads that you do get to be as specific to you and able for you to be able to work with them as possible. Um, so if you know you have questions about specific lead gen tools and how either you're using them currently or how you could use them with a new website, um, please do email us at marketing at 20 over 10. You can just put it to me, Samantha, and I'm happy to review that with you. Um, somebody else asked, does adding LinkedIn updates to the website help SEO ranking? Um, typically, no, because the way that your updates would be reflected on your website would be in through a widget, and the widget that is added is um, the, co the code that is added to it, the way that it's added on the back end, the search engine can't crawl it the same way that it can crawl it on the website. However, if you have a Twitter feed or you have a LinkedIn page, any of those social media platforms in themselves, the more you post to those can def definitely improve your SEO. So while I don't think you need a whole feed in your website, if you're looking to cross-promote your LinkedIn profile, get more people to visit it, definitely include it. And when you're thinking about the types of things you're going to post to your LinkedIn page or your Twitter page or your Facebook page, make sure you're regularly sending people back to your website because that will increase your SEO. You know, if we are, we're doing a search for a business, one of the first things um, or the first few things that we're going to see in the search results is obviously the business's website, but then typically it will be their social media pages. And that gives you tons of opportunity to control what people are finding when they search for you. If you don't have social media profiles after your website is listed, it's sort of a crapshoot of what might be next um, in terms of what, you know, search results come up. So the more you can take control over those listings, the better, definitely. So I think that is all of the questions that we have thus far. Um, again, if anything wasn't clear or you need any um, additional information on anything, please, please reach out. We are happy to help. We want everyone to be able to take these six steps and use them to write for their own website. We will, um, again, be sharing this presentation so you'll have them to reference. And if you use it to make any updates to your site, please reach out and let us know. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll even 
promoted or shared or featured on our blog or something like that. We love to see success stories of people implementing the tips that we provide in our webinars. So I will just leave our contact information up here for a minute or two while people sign off. And thank you so much again for joining us today. Have a great afternoon, everyone.